Hello and welcome along to our first ever content and a brand new series from the official game of the Ashes, Cricket 19. We're going to be playing an Ashes test today. As I've promised over the last couple of weeks, we're going to have plenty of content from this game. We're going to eventually get to a long-term career mode, the thing I prefer doing in this game anyway. But there's been a few teething problems on the Xbox edition, particularly with the community and downloading teams. So that will have to wait a little while, but we still want to get our teeth into the game in the meantime. So we're going to go through a whole Ashes test, first one of the summer this year, and we're just going to see how we can get on with England, playing against the mighty rivals Australia. I'm starting this game as someone who's played the three previous editions and really enjoyed them, so I'm hoping this one will be exactly the same. I have had a little test run and that went rather well, so I'm hoping we'll be able to do as well in this one. Obviously it will depend largely on pitch conditions and the lineup we can put out, but otherwise we're looking forward to playing this game. The plan is that we're going to have three episodes a week, every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at midday for the next five weeks or however long the test lasts. We're going to play through a session in each episode so it could be up to 15 if we go all the way through to day five but if like most tests it ends in the middle of day four it could only be three or four weeks. Whenever this one finishes we are going to crack on with career mode providing all the technical problems with the community area are resolved and we can get all the real players in game to make it as familiar as possible. For those who don't know and have never played the game before and are just watching along and you normally follow the football match manager content. The game has all of the England and Australia sides licence, both the test team and the limited overs one. They've also got the domestic league from Australia. In England unfortunately none of the domestic sides are licensed so as a result we haven't got any other players we can add to the squad at the moment but we are just going to get into it with the base squad available and fingers crossed we'll have enough talent to choose from. If you're new to the channel and watching for the first time please do subscribe to the channel. We've got daily FM19 content, three episodes a week to come from Cricket 19 as we've mentioned and weekly content from snooker 19 at the moment as well i do prefer long-term careers and this is a little bit of a one-off for us but hopefully it'll just settle us down nicely and get us used to what career mode's going to be like so we're just going to get into an ashes series as we're setting it up i'll talk you through some of the reasons we're doing this we've mentioned the problems with the community on xbox one but one of the things i have found slightly frustrating in the previous editions of the game is the fact that test cricket isn't really played at the same pace in this game there's always a run rate of four and a half or five and over and it's almost like playing one day cricket so that's the main reason I picked an Ashes test to do as my test run just to see what the run rate's like whether it's realistic how the fields are set they promised in this game that there'd be a bit more razzmatazz we want to see what the build-up's like and they said that they would learn based on your shots or the patterns you were producing in bowling and adapt to those and make themselves better at learning your game and if they're able to do that it will make for an interesting challenge as in the previous games it's always been hard on the way up when you have poor attributes and no talent but once you get to that stage where you're a world-class player you can really out dominate everyone because you're thinking better than the computer so we're obviously going into this as England we're playing in our test outfit as you'd expect we've got a soft dry pitch for day one at Edgebaston so we're just going to go in and pick the lineup we've got Keaton Jennings and Rory Burns opening a bit of a weak link for England it's been known for some time since Alistair Cook retired so unfortunately we're just going to have to live with that but after that we've got a pretty star-studded lineup with the exception possibly of Ben folks who's only really played a few tests in real life unfortunately a couple of the other batsmen I would have picked aren't there James Vince isn't in the side on this one probably because he was dropped from the last tests in real life but Joe Denley who made his debut recently albeit as an experienced player he's not in there either so that's left us a little bit short of batting options in terms of the bowlers I've left Mark Wood out just because in real life he's been injury prone and not been able to cope with test cricket too often so we brought in Chris Wokes instead it means that we've got Broad Anderson and Wokes as our seamless lineup with Ben Stokes able to support and we've got the spinner in Moen Alley who's an off spinner which I prefer anyway and Joe Root who can do a bit of part time bowling if need be. Remarkably we've got three wicket keepers in the lineup, but I can't drop Butler and Bairstow as they're among our best batsmen and Ben Folks is in as the wicket keeper so it just fills the batting lineup and extends it a bit further. So let's go back and play the match. We're just going to get into it. I'm going to quickly check all the settings are okay off camera and then we'll get into the first day of the first test. The settings are all okay, everything's on random as it should be, so we're going to get into the match and we'll come back for the pre-match build-up and the toss as the loading screens take absolutely ages. My biggest complaint with the game, but I'm not going to make you sit through it. 
Okay, we're into day one. We've got some nice newspaper articles on the way in. We just want to see what the pre-match build-up's like. It certainly looks a lot more cinematic already than previously, where you normally just got a toss of the coin and then thrown straight into the match. So it certainly looks a lot better at the moment, but I don't know what that umpire was doing there. How sniffing the wickets is going to help, I'm not quite sure. Let's see if we get taken to the toss in a moment, as we get plenty of panoramic views of the ground. We've got the national anthem as well, so we're going to skip through that, and we just want to get to the toss now to see what it's like. We've got the playing 11s laid out as well. That's pretty good looking. A great bowling lineup for Australia. And interesting to see from the addition of the game that Warner and Steve Smith are chucked straight back in. We're not going to call them cheats in this one. We're going to take the moral high ground. As we plan for the dry soft pitch, we'd really quite like to win the toss on day one. So let's have a look at what the toss is like. There's plenty of atmosphere at the moment. It's a little bit glitchy to be honest. It's just sort of strolling along. It's not anything to do with our recording. It is just what it looks like on the screen. Australia are calling it. There's certainly a bit of a TV crew there. That's a bit more than we've had previously. We've got a lovely big ant coin as well. So let's have a look at what it's like. We've won the toss. It's a dry soft pitch. So I think we're going to have a bowl first, to be honest. And just see if we can get them out for a low score. It's something I'd be interested to see. I prefer batting, so I'd rather save that till last. And we like to chase down a big total if need be. So we're going to get into the first over. The plan is, as we show a session from each episode, that we're just going to show you highlights. As 30 overs will obviously be about an hour long particularly with field changes and bowling changes although we will show as few of them on camera so we are going to go through the first over I'll talk to you a bit about the career mode we're lining up as well and then after that we'll just show highlights from the rest of it wickets, good shots and close calls as well we want to see every facet of the game and Jimmy Anderson will be opening the bowling in a moment OK, it's Jimmy Anderson to bowl the first over. One of the best swing bowlers in the world. He's not going to swing for too long, so we need to make the most of it. Give him a four or five over stint and let him go all out for swing deliveries. So we're going to start with an in-swinger. And as we go through the first over, we'll talk through a bit of our career mode as well. Let's see what we can do with the first ball, though. A little bit too far down the leg side. And in the end, Harris just sends it down to the fielder for a dot ball. So we're going to talk about our career mode too. But firstly, for those of you who are just watching a few videos to see if you should buy the game, Game. It is pretty similar to the previous editions. One reason my screen looks slightly different is we're just peppering good length deliveries. Nothing special at the moment. A slight outswinger there and it's just sent down to mid off. A very simple dot ball and Jimmy Anderson's happy with the fielding. You have got the option in the game now, a bit like the old EA Sports cricket games. They have a button option where you can just press a button to choose the aggression of the shot. And the same for producing your bowling deliveries as well. But we've gone for the old classic edition which was in Don Bradman cricket 14 and 17. 17's the game I've played so many hours on. It was probably my favourite cricket game of all time. And one of my favourite sports games on the console, to be honest. I played a massive career in that one as an opening batsman and spin bowler. And I used the old classic system. And I just won't turn back now. I'm a bit old-fashioned like that. So we're going to go for another outswinging delivery. As it caused a little bit of trouble last time. And again, we've managed to catch a slight edge off the bat there. But it has gone down to mid-off for a dot again. Jimmy Anderson's causing a bit of trouble in the first over. We'll just get through this one and then we'll show some highlights and talk about our career mode plans as well. So let's just bowl this one a bit more of an in-swinger. We've caught him on the leg side but it's off for the first run of the match. It should just be a single as we bowl it back into the wicket keeper and he's managed to get there comfortably preventing a second run. One more in the over and it would be a good one to start if we just gave away one single. We've got two more deliveries to come and let's see if we can get David Warner out. A bit more of a conservative field automatically for him. I think that's a pretty good thing to be honest. We've managed to catch him for a single again so they are going to get a second run in the over. We're just going to put it back into the wicket keeper folks and Anderson's got one more delivery to do something special. This time bowling again to Marcus Harris. So we're going to go for an in-swinger and just try and throw it wide outside off stump just to try and catch him out and get an edge. Let's see how wide we can get it. It's a little bit more central. You have to throw it really wide to get it to miss leg stump. So it is a bit of a challenge in that sense and it just shows that it's reflecting the pitch. Something that's really important in the game. I'm not used to doing the fielding. Normally I just do the batting and bowling as a career player so I will be a little bit slow with that but a pretty decent first over and a fairly immersive experience so far. You know who's coming in second based on Ashes tests in the past Stuart Broad's coming in to do the second over it had been Chris Wokes occasionally for the England team but we're going to leave it as Broad for now as I'm sure it will be in real life as well. So again we're going to try and utilise the swing in the first few overs we won't be as afraid to come around the wicket with Broad, something he does quite often in real life too. Again a pretty good delivery to start off and it's going to be a dot 
got ball to David Warner. Talking about our career mode though, we will just play through this first over with the new bowler again. It's the same buttons to move around the wicket as it was in the previous game. Pretty easy controls and really fluent to get used to. And it's so rewarding once you get good at the batting and bowling in this game, as it does feel a bit more immersive than previous cricket games decades ago. Another dot ball and we're back for the third delivery for Stuart Broad. And we're going to try and throw in a standard delivery now, just to catch him up with a slightly shorter length. But otherwise we're going to keep peppering the good length for five balls and over. He's been flicked to the square leg for a single down to Australia. And they're going to get their first run of the second over. And they're three without loss after nine deliveries. A pretty solid start from them. And this unfortunately isn't going as well as my trial run did a couple of days ago. But we are going to go for an outswinger into Harris this time. We're going to put in an effort ball and put a bit more pace on it. And we almost caught him out, but it's down to mid-off for a dot ball. So in terms of our career mode coming up in a few weeks' time, once we play through this first test, the aim is that we're going to try and emulate Alistair Cook, a man that really needs replacing in the England side, but it hasn't been possible so far. So we're going to be an opening left-handed batsman, just as I would be in real life. And to keep a little bit of variety in the series, we're going to also be a batting all-rounder, just so we get the odd over of spin, so we're not just batting constantly for 10 years. It's the sort of career I did in Don Bradman Cricket 17, although that time it was to partner Alistair Cook, and it was a really enjoyable series for me, and the one I've played most often. I didn't play my career in the last game quite so much, as I was doing a pace bowler's career, and I didn't find it quite so rewarding, and a little bit more tedious. So as a result, I'm going back to my favourite, and hopefully it'll bode well in this one. We're going to put in our first bouncer of the day, just to see how the AI reacts. Normally they used to throw a bat in the old games, and on this occasion it's no different with Harris. He's got it down to square left for a single, although it wasn't the best delivery in truth. So two overs gone, we nearly had an overthrow there, it's four without loss for Australia, and from this point on for the rest of the session, we'll just have highlights from each of our bowlers. There's room for the start of the third over, as we go through these highlights, do let me know how you're getting on in the game and how you're finding it, I'm interested to know how your experiences differ to mine. It's a great shot from Australia, it might be the first boundary, we've gone for the dive but we haven't quite got there, Harris has got his first boundary of the day, and Australia's first as well and the third over hasn't started well, the first highlight being an Australian boundary. Outswinging delivery to Warner, we really want to try and catch him out while he's new at the crease. Once he gets set, he's a very hard man to get out. He nearly caught an edge off that one. It's whistled through to the wicket keeper. Probably the closest shave we've had to a wicket so far in this game. Third delivery of the fourth over. We're going to come around the wicket with Stuart Broad. Just going to switch it over and get as narrow a line as possible and in swing it towards Harris. We're going to go for an effort ball as well. We really want to try and catch him out. It's gone a little bit too far to the leg side and that may well be a boundary as well. This has been a really loose start considering how well my trial run for this went. The bowling lines have been absolutely awful so far. I can only apologise for the standard of my deliveries but I'm sure we'll get used to it before too long. It's Jimmy Anderson to Marcus Harris, 16 without loss after four and a half overs. We're going for the outswinger on the good length. We're determined that consistency will get him, although he seems to be defending quite well at the moment. Though if we can prevent him run scoring and build up some pressure, hopefully we'll get success before too long. So we're going to go for a second one in succession. Just try and catch him out. We want him to try and wave a bat at one, and fingers crossed that's the one he misses. He's done just that there, but it's a beautiful cover drive, and it's gone straight between the two fielders, and it looks like it's going to be a bounce. Australia reached the 20 mark without the loss of a wicket and Jimmy Anderson's having a torrid start on a pretty good first day pitch. So let's go back to a standard one. In fact, we'll put a little bit of an outswinger in. We really think we can get Marcus Harris this way. The inexperienced batsman surely will throw his bat at one and he does just there, but it doesn't quite carry. Good fielding in the slips to prevent a boundary. Wonderful effort and our first chance of the match. Hopefully we'll get another one with the next delivery. Okay, we've probably got one more over out of Jimmy Anderson. Four will probably be enough before we bring Wokes on. So let's just try and outswing her, try and catch Harris out. We've really got to try and get a wicket before he comes out of the attack, but instead we've gone for a boundary. It's been a disastrous start from Anderson, and unfortunately it's another four for Australia. We'll go for the outswinging delivery, try and catch him out with the last ball, but I think Warner's probably going to be the harder target here. He just leads it sensibly, and the eighth over ends with a pretty good score for Australia. They'll be happy with 33 without loss. Okay, we're into the ninth over. We're going to make a bowling change. It's pretty much the same as the previous editions of the game. Just press the up arrow on the directional pad and you can change the next bowler as and when you want. So we're going to bring Chris Wokes into the attack. Broad will continue for one or two more and then we'll think about bringing on the spinner but we might give Ben Stokes one or two overs first. He is the famous partnership breaker in test cricket at the moment so we'll give him one or two to do what he can. Chris Wokes coming in. For some reason his fitness isn't full unless that's confidence on the bar at the bottom but we're going to start with an outswinger just 
see if there's any movement. If not, we'll revert to standard line and length. He's got a little bit of swing on it, that one. Not too much, just a tickle. But Marcus Harris plays and misses, and he almost gives us an edge to the slips. We can do a few more tricks with Oaks, who bowls a lot more in the shorter forms as well. So we're going to go for a slower delivery next up. Just see if we can catch the batsman out. That's got to be an LB shout. We're going to go up for it. Hopefully the umpire will oblige, and he certainly does. Let's see if Australia appealed a decision. We haven't seen DRS in this game yet. But Chris Wokes comes into the attack and makes his mark immediately. The first wicket of the innings. And Marcus Harris is the weakness for Australia. 23 of 33 balls. A pretty good strike rate for him. But after getting a start, he didn't go and make a score. Something that brings us Makawaja to the crease. Last ball of the over. Kawaja's back on strike after a single. We're going to go for an outswinger on a good length. I love the consistency of Test cricket. I also love T20 as well. As Kawaja plays its first brilliant shot of the innings, that one might reach the boundary. It doesn't look like it's going to though, and we should restrict Australia to two. Okay, almost halfway through the 10th over with Broad. Probably the last one we're going to get any swing out of the pitch. That's why we're protecting Anderson, because there's not much left. We went a little bit wider this time, and although he plays again, he misses this time and nearly gets an to the slips. Maybe we've just got to go for a slightly wider line. Okay, final ball of the over. We've played out a bouncer, so let's go back to the outswing. Again, good line and length. They're working in this over. Throw it a bit wider, make him play. This time he gets a good connection, and he may well get a boundary for it. It races away, and we end the over with a four, but we're certainly starting to probe and catch the Australian batsman out. Ten overs gone. We're going to be back to Chris Wokes, and then we're going to bring in either the spinner or Ben Stokes to replace Stuart Broad at the other end. Right, let's hope for a grandstand finish to this over. There's not been much in it so far. A few singles and a couple of dot balls. No real danger for the batsman. That one was, though. Oh, it whistles past the bat. He didn't quite get a connection, and it's through to the keeper. A brilliant finish to the over for Wokes, who certainly seems to be the most dangerous bowler so far. Chris Wokes midway through the 13th over. Two dot balls and then a single for Warner. We're going for the standard line and length now, as the swing seems to have dried up, and that's a fantastic cover drive. Not full enough, and Kawaja's got it away. It looks like it's going to be another boundary for him. He started like a house on fire and this game's been completely different to my trial run last time. The run rate's much higher and we're not taking any wickets. Back with Ben Stokes for the 14th. We'll start with a slower delivery. It's the one thing that's led to a wicket so far. So let's see if Stokes can have the same success. Oh, he caught the batsman in his crease but he managed to flick it away. It's a dot ball but we were testing Warner there. Halfway through the over. Let's throw in the bouncer then. See if David Warner can handle what Ben Stokes has got. We're going to go for the short pitch delivery and hopefully catch him out. He plays at that one which is a bit surprising based on the previous ones but you can see why because he's hit it away for a boundary. A wonderful shot off the back foot from Warner and unfortunately Ben Stokes is going the distance as well. We really don't look like picking up wickets at the moment. Two deliveries to go in an uneventful Australia over. We're just going for the standard line and length deliveries now. Just outside off stump but we've misplaced that one and as we've drifted to the leg side they've punished us. They've just defended well all over and then as soon as they get a loose delivery they've hit it away to four to the boundary. Marvin Ali can't get there and Australia have got the four they want off the over. Okay, halfway through the session we've had our drinks break. Some pretty good animations to be honest although our 12th man Sam Curran does not look realistic at all. Halfway through the Ben Stokes over. We're going for an outswinger. We had a no ball and three dots. There's not much to speak about. We're just throwing them outside off stump and hoping that David Warner doesn't do that too many times. He's got it through the covers and it's going to go for four. I think we're not far away from changing to our preferred field. Into the 17th over now with Chris Wokes. We're really going for the standard line and length. Peppering it outside off stump. Can we force something from Kawaja? We've still got plenty of slips in, but at the moment he's defending well, so we might just throw it out a bit wider. See if we can force him into a shot, or do we just bank on consistency working eventually? We've thrown it a bit wider and it's almost worked. We're going to go up for that because I think there might have been a tickle, but the umpire obviously disagrees, so we're going to continue with the dot balls. Two balls left in the over now. Kawaja's got himself off strike. We're going for the standard line and length to Warner as well. We've got to get it wider. We keep drifting down the leg side but that one's a little bit too wide and David Warner just flicks it down to the third man region where we haven't got anyone backing up. So they're going to get a two off that. David Warner's back on strike for the last delivery and I think we're going to have to throw in a bouncer just to try and finish off the over. So let's go for that long bouncer. Hopefully Chris Wokes can produce a bit of magic and David Warner will throw a silly shot which he tries to there but he's got away with it and that's going to be a single down to square leg. 
Okay, 18th over. We've seen enough of Ben Stokes, so Moen Ali comes into the attack. We've set our preferred field now as well. Just one man at deep forward mid wicket. Other than that, all the men inside the circle. And we've got a slipper gully and leg gully as well, just to try and catch the batsman out. So it's the line and length we've been bowling in our career in previous editions of the game. I want to see if it's still as effective. Of course it is. Look at that for the first ball. Moen Ali bowls David Warner clean. What a delivery that is. 27 or 44 balls. And I think you can see why I want to do spin in the career mode. What a delivery from Moen Ali and talk about an impact from the new bowler. Steve Smith's out to the middle to face Ali's first ball and we're going to come over the wicket now as we bowl into the right hander. Let's see if it's just as effective. We're going to throw it outside off stump a bit and again he's forced into a defensive stroke. This looks like a spinning pitch for sure. This time we're going to go for a flighted delivery. Just see if they'll come and chase it. We're going to go for the effort ball as well. Steve Smith goes out. He's got to be caught. He's called it. I'm sure he's called it the second man. Did it hit the floor at any stage? No, it did not. What on earth happened there with the animations? It hit the wicketkeeper on the glove. And then the second slip fielder managed to catch it just before it dropped to the ground. Two wickets for Moen Ali in his first over. And Steve Smith is out for a duck after four balls. Moen Ali's the hero. And this game has just turned on its head. Travis Head is out to the middle. What good timing for that one. And with the last delivery of the over, Moen Ali's chasing a third wicket. So we're going to go for a wrong and just to see if we can catch him out. But I don't think it'll work. He'll probably play defensively. And he does just that back to Moen Ali. A wonderful over from the spinner. Two wickets in his first over. What an impact he's made there. We're back to Chris Wokes and his role's important in this 19th over. Line and length to restrict the batsman and that means that we can take wickets at the other end. That might be LB as well but I think it pitched outside leg and the ball's running away so we better go and field that first. It's going to be a single and I think they've just about got away with that as a leg bye. But a great start to the over from Chris Wokes and we're really starting to put them under pressure. Travis head on strike. We're just going for line and length deliveries. Halfway through the over now we want to try and get him outside off stump. Playing and missing at deliveries. He's gone down on the ground though that's a really good shot and it might go all the way for four as well we won't need to get out the dive we've just got there in time and I think that's going to be a two for Australia taking them on to 74 for three usual service at this point the last ball of the 19th over outside off stump standard line and length can we get Travis head to play at it that's gone to the slips has it bounced I think it has unfortunately so he's not going to be a wicket on this occasion brilliant bowling from Chris Wokes and the pressure's on at the other end where Moen Ali's back into the attack Moen Ali back into bowl his second over. A double wicket maiden in his first one. It seems like spin bowling may be a little overpowered based on that. But let's just hope it was a one-off. We're going to go back to our field as for some reason it's not stayed set. Despite us trying to apply it to all. And hopefully it will be just as effective as in the first over. And we'll be able to pick up another wicket. I will know that it's overpowered if that works. Either that or we've got a pitch very conducive to spin. Though it didn't look like it at the toss. Both sides just going for the one spinner. We're going to throw in a wrong one with the second delivery just to try and catch Kawaja out. He's the set batsman and Ali's probably the man that's going to get him and a good dive at leg gully to prevent any runs. Chris Wokes back into the attack. One more over we'll have from him. And then we might give Joe Root a go before lunch. As he may get another one or two overs. He's flicked away to the leg side. And it could be four with the first ball. We're certainly not going to get there, are we? It slows up quite a lot. Joe Root does make it. And then he touches the boundary with his foot. That's a silly little glitch, that. He'd taken it in miles before. But he didn't get rid of the ball in time. We'll have to go for the tap back next time. And we'll just have to concede an extra run. A standard delivery again. This time we're going to get a bit further outside off stump. As we keep drifting to the leg side that one's far better but a little bit too wide if anything and it's gone for four on the other side maybe we've bowled Chris Wokes one over too many Hopefully we can bring in Joe Root for an over or two and he'll be able to cash in instead as they try and attack him rather than Ali who's difficult to get away. Another defensive shot from Kawaja and Moen Ali's really causing trouble. Is he ever going to concede a run? It doesn't look like it at the moment. Certainly overpowered in terms of spin bowling unless they've just decided they're going to defend consistently. But Moen Ali has not conceded a run. I say as he finally gives away his first just a single down to the leg side but certainly a landmark moment for Australia actually getting a run off Moen Ali. They're starting to rebuild although the run rate slowed down. They've gone 13 runs without a wicket now so they are starting to build a new partnership. Moen Ali a bit wider this time. That's got an edge on it though. Travis Head is out and this spin bowling is unbelievable from Moen Ali. Three wickets for just one run and surely this is overpowered. No side can be this bad against spin particularly the Australian left-handers. I know Moen Ali's got a knack in test cricket but this is getting a little bit silly. 
Edge to the wicketkeeper for 10 for Travis Head. And after those two convincing boundaries in the last over, unfortunately he's back in the shed now. OK, I've brought Jimmy Anderson back into the attack for a couple more overs. And then Joe Root will bowl the last two with Ali before lunch. I've got to say I'm really impressed with the atmosphere at the moment. Quite a lot of the traditional songs that you hear at the cricket are really going up around the ground. So as well as getting the licensed team, they have taken care of the atmosphere. Something you've really got to appreciate as a sports fan. But the main man's back into the attack now. Moe and Ali, I'm sure, will deliver another wicket. We're just going to play an off-break delivery. Peter Hanscom did get a run off him with his first ball. And now we're a little bit more central. But he's hit that beautifully. And maybe Peter Hanscom knows how to play spin. It didn't look like it in the big bash this year. But I'm sure he's going to be able to do it in this game. He seems to be in control of Moe and Ali. OK, after that early boundary, we've had four dot balls in a row. So we're going to go for the do's. We'll try and catch him out. A wrong and will they fall for it? He won't. It's a lovely sweep shot for a single and a good way to finish the over the worst off Moen Ali so far five runs isn't a disaster the three wickets certainly is for Australia line and length out swinging to the right hander from Jimmy Anderson hasn't bowled at a right hander yet let's see if he can cause any trouble with this one. Oh, it's been flicked away into the slips but they've got away with it Peter Hanscom not as confident against the pace bowling we're going to have to watch out for that one we're going to continue with this line and then just throw in one in swinger really try and catch him out just before lunch he's thrown outside the off stump again it's a Poor delivery though, it's going for four. And Peter Hanscom responds with a boundary. We're not going to get back to that one. Half an over of dot balls to Moen Ali. So we're going to try and flight one in. I'm sure Kawaja won't fall for it. He's got a pretty set plan against Moen Ali. And this time he does go for a bit of an expansive stroke. But it's down to cover and it's a dot ball. Let's throw in a wrong and see if we can catch out Kawaja. I highly doubt we'll be able to. It's going into the leg side. Oh, he does get an edge on it. But it's fallen safe and he's got away with it. Good bowling from Moen Ali. The first sign of weakening defences from Kawaja. Joe Root's one away from a maiden. He's not tempted many shots. Just the one where the batsman exposed his stumps. But he didn't really look like attacking. Although the final ball does go away down the leg side. And it looks like they're going to get two for that. As we go back to the wicket keeper from Moen Ali. We don't want him running like that when he's not bowling. Otherwise he's going to be absolutely knackered. Peter Hanscom finishes off the over with two. But not a bad one from Joe Root. Considering he's not got as much spin in the locker. Last ball of the over to Peter Hanscom. He's been a bit defensive in this one. So we're going to throw in a wrong one. See if he attacks it he does and he's got it away down the leg side to be fair it's just going to be a single Joe Root claims it and he'll be back into the attack next over right should be the last ball before lunch been a very quiet couple of overs Joe Root bowled out a maiden and just a single in this one so far we'll finish off with a wrong and see if we can catch Hanscom out I'm sure he'll just defend it he doesn't he flicks it to the leg side he seems to be doing that to the doozer quite a lot and it looks like they're going to get two off that one a bit of a poor way to end the first session I presume that will be the end let's just see if we get to taken to the lunch break. 30 overs gone, Australia just passed the 100 mark and it's for four wickets which we're delighted about. There's the confirmation of the batting scorecard for Australia then, 101 for four after 30 overs. We really pulled it back after a brilliant start from the openers. Chris Wokes setting things up and then Moen Ali coming in and destroying the top order for Australia. And now we're down to the middle order, though Kawaja looks like a rock for the innings. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this test now. The bowling was far more immersive than I expected and it's making me look forward to being a batting all-rounder, particularly with the off-spin deliveries going well. If you are new to the channel and did enjoy this video, please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you think about the game so far. I'm interested to know your thoughts. Are you enjoying it and which parts are you finding best? I'm certainly enjoying the spin bowling at the moment. Obviously, I can't comment on the batting yet, but once we get in, let me know what you think of that. I am a bit more of a traditional test batsman, so I will leave deliveries and I'll play at a slower run rate if need be. As I mentioned, there will be three Three episodes a week from this test match as we play a session in every episode so every Tuesday Thursday and Saturday at midday please do come along and check them out and let me know what you think of them before we head into our long-term career in a few weeks time subscribe to the channel for daily FM 19 content as my channel name gives away we've got two long-term stories which we're well into from that game we've got three episodes a week from this cricket 19 series and then we've also got weekly content from snooker 19 that's every Friday at 4:30. So if you are a fan of other sports games, please do go and check out all the content. And I really hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy making it. But a massive thanks for watching this one. I hope you like the look of the new game. And I hope to see you next time for the second session of this match as we try to get Australia out and have a go with the battle.